Hello and welcome to Mr. Rogers Tutorials. I'm Bob Rogers. Today we have another exciting carpentry tutorial. Today's topic is excavation volumes. So excavation volumes are an important consideration when budgeting a project. Why you might ask? Well, it's surprisingly expensive to move dirt. All the more reason to get these numbers right. So I'm sure that some of you have some experience with this type of trades math. Uh, but for those that don't, I will walk through the simple steps to try and make it as clear as possible. I'm sure you're going to find that it's no problem at all. At the end of this lesson, you should feel much more confident performing these calculations. So here we go. Step one. Step one is building size and working room. When we're working uh, with an excavation for a building, we have to make sure that the hole we're digging will fit our building. We also have to make sure that we have adequate room to work. This additional size is what we call working room. So let's go and take a look on how that looks on the whiteboard. First, we're going to talk about working room and how does that really work. Here's our building right here. We are starting off with a 4.2 meter by 3.8 meter size base. And one of the main things we have to consider in regards to working room is that when we actually dig our hole, it's important to make sure that not only does our building fit, but it's important to make sure that our building has enough room all the way around it inside of our excavation so that the people we send down to the hole can work. And this is called our working room. In this case here, we are going to, uh, let's make a working room um, on all sides of our building of one meter. So we have a one meter working room on each side of our building in our excavation. Step two, excavation slope. In order to keep ourselves safe and comply with WCB regulations, we need to slope the side walls of our excavation. That helps to prevent a potential cave-in. A three to four slope ratio is a general guideline for our excavation slope. Uh, naturally, what ends up happening is that the top of our excavation ends up becoming larger than the bottom of our excavation. So let's go back to the whiteboard and let's work this through. Now we're going to go ahead and actually tackle a couple of problems. We've already established that at the bottom of our hole or our excavation, we have to have some space between our excavated sides and the building and that's called our working room and we've said that this working room is going to be one meter so now that we have a working room of one meter on either side of our building we can make a shape that represents the bottom of our excavation now this is looking from the top down of course so this bottom hole is going to be the size of the building plus one meter on either side so we've already established that we have a building that is 4.2 meters by 3.8 meters. So we'll add 2 meters to each of those measurements and that will give us the size of our bottom excavation. So that is going to be, it's going to give us 6.2 meters on one side and 5.8 meters on the other side. This is the size of our bottom excavation. Now we have a little bit of a challenge. With straight side excavation, the problem is WCB regulations will state that if these sides are not shored or sloped, it can be dangerous and you can actually have a cave-in potentially hurting or possibly killing employees. So what we want to do to prevent that is to slope our sides. So when we slope our sides, the standard slope is for every one unit of height, we slope it by 0.75. You might remember this from before. 
We use the same ratios with our small and large triangles. Now in this case, we're going to draw another triangle on this side, and this is actually going to represent the depth of our excavation. So if you remember back with our other triangles, the tall side of the orange triangle, which is the depth of our excavation, that's 2.4 meters. So now what we can do with this formula is we can go ahead now and we can calculate what x is. And x will be the added size on each side of our building because of our slope. So we're comparing a horizontal measurement to a horizontal measurement. x compared to 0.75 and then a vertical measurement, 2.4, compared to 1 on this side. And we've already calculated that out in the previous video that you saw on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. X equals 1.8 meters. Now we can take that 1.8 meters and add that to each side of our building. So the easiest way to do that is to simply double it We'll times that by 2, and then that will give us 3.6 meters that we will add to each of these two measurements. So 5.8 plus 3.6 is 9.4. So we have 9.4 meters on that side, and then we have 6.2 plus 3.6 is 9.8. So now we have an upper excavation that is 9.8 by 9.4. We have a lower excavation that is 5.8 by 6.2. Step number three, our average excavation. Now that we have worked our way through our slope of excavation and how that affects our upper excavation, we have to determine the average between the top of our excavation and the bottom of our excavation. Um, you're going to find that this math is actually pretty simple, so we're going to go ahead and work in step, uh, step four before we go back to the whiteboard. Step four is our excavation volume and bulking factor. Once we've determined our excavated volume, we have to apply one more simple calculation. Um, if you keep your original volume, you will be pretty surprised when the number of dump trucks that have to come to your job site is far higher than you originally anticipated. Uh, these additional trucks mean additional costs, and if these costs aren't quite worked into your estimate, they'll end up coming out of your pocket. So it's pretty good reason to try and get these numbers bang on. Now all we have to do is we're gonna figure out the square meters, the size of our upper excavation, the size of our lower excavation, and then we'll add those together and we'll get the average of both of those numbers, which is actually pretty easy. So 9.8 times 9.4 is 92.12 square meters. And 6.2 times 5.8 is 35.96 square meters. Now we simply add these two numbers together and we divide by two. That's how we find averages. We simply take whatever numbers we're adding together to find an average with, and we divide it by the amount of numbers that we've added together. In this case, two numbers. So 92.12 plus 35.96 is 128.08 square meters. And we'll average those numbers by dividing by the amount of numbers we're adding together, which is two, which gives us an average square meters between the two upper and lower excavations of 64.04 square meters. So that's our, ex that's our excavation average between the two. Now all we have to do to turn our square meter or our size into an actual volume is multiply by one more number. In this case, it's the depth of our excavation. So 64.04 multiplied by 2.4, the depth of our excavation, gives us a total volume of, for our excavation of 153.7 square meters.
cubic meters. Okay, just one more pretty easy step. Now we have to figure out if we have 153.7 cubic meters of dirt, we can't keep it on the job site, so we have to calculate how many trucks we have to order in order to get our dirt off site. So in this case here, our trucks have 12.2 cubic meters, that's how much each truck will carry, and we have a bulking factor of 15%. Now, a bulking factor is just simply when you dig up dirt, it kind of gets all fluffy. Have you ever dug a hole in your backyard and put all that dirt back in and there's a big hump afterwards? Well, that's called bulking factor. So what we do is we take our excavation volume, we're going to multiply that by 1.15, and that will give us our total excavated volume, including our bulking factor. And that will be 176.15. 76 cubic meters. Now we simply take 176.76 cubic meters, which includes our 15% bulking factor, and we divide that by the amount of material that we can get in each truck. In this case, it's 12.2 cubic meters. 176.76 divided by 12.2 is 14.488 trucks. Of course, we can't have a part of truck show up, so we always round up to 15 trucks. It's just as easy as that. Thank you for taking the time to watch another exciting tutorial by me, Mr. Rogers. Feel free to visit us anytime at www.mrrogersneighborhood.tech for more instruction in construction. Have a great day.